Last week, Meghan Markle visited a group of kids and teens for an afternoon of games and crafts, much to their delight. On October 2, the 43-year-old Duchess of Sussex stopped by Girls Incorporated of Greater Santa Barbara to lend a hand with Social Media U, a brand new digital health initiative. In order to improve the next generation's connection with technology, Girls Incorporated, an American nonprofit organization that inspires girls to be strong, smart, and bold, is teaming up with hashtag Half the Story, another nonprofit, launched the initiative across the states. Alongside the CEO of Girls Incorporated Stephanie J. Hull and the Duchess Larissa May, the creator of Half the Story, participated in the celebration of their partnership. Megan mentioned that she was one of the most bullied persons in the world during an exercise when we went through a number of scenarios, May stated. We had girls wave these little emoji signs and discuss how they would have felt in each of these scenarios. With Stephanie and Megan, we discuss what it really means to grow up in this digital age, May continued. During her visit earlier this month, the Duchess assisted in testing the Social Media U curriculum, which was created with feedback from the teens on the advisory board for Hashtag Half the Story. Its stated goal is to support teens in using technology for positive interactions and creativity, while also encouraging them to socialize with others without screens. According to reports, Melissa Frenchgates's Pivotal Ventures, the Oprah Winfrey Charitable Foundation, and Meghan and Prince Harry's Archwell Foundation are all providing financial backing for the initiative. During the South by Southwest Festival in March 2024, Meghan talked candidly about the hateful cyberbullying she endured while expecting Archie and Lilibet. Alongside Brooke Shields and Katie Couric, the Duchess of Sussex was in Texas to talk about breaking barriers and challenging stereotypes at a festival event. Megan discussed her use of social media and asserted that the majority of the hostility she encountered online occurred during her two young children's pregnancies. For my own safety, I stay away from it now, but the majority of the harassment and abuse I was facing on social media and online happened when I was expecting Archie, Lily, and a newborn, she stated. Just consider that and try to figure out why people could be so vicious. It's harsh, not catty. Why would you do that during such a delicate and holy time as a mother or while you are pregnant? You could succumb to it or nearly succumb to how painful that is, the woman continued. Alternatively, it could be that, simply because I was expecting the primal urge to protect your child at all costs and, consequently, to protect yourself also took over. Megan went on an expedition last week to support the Digital Wellness Collaboration, which comes after the Duke and Duchess founded the Parents Network an initiative to address online kids' safety, to encourage a safe and supportive community that is available to all parents and caregivers navigating the complex digital world, a group of parents has banded together as part of the campaign. People who have first-hand knowledge of the agony and ruin caused by social media use are included in this group. The Sussex's Archwell Foundation website describes the network as follows. Our mission is to prevent anyone else from suffering the way we have. Each of us has been through something no parent should ever have to experience. We are here to support parents whose children have been harmed by social media. All parents and caregivers navigating the complicated digital world are welcome to join our secure and encouraging community. The Parents Network seeks to support parents whose children are experiencing modern-day challenges of cyberbullying, depression and anxiety, sexual exploitation, eating disorders, and a range of other traumas associated with social media use, in addition to those who have lost children. The network claims that some people are looking for ways to turn their suffering into purpose. Some of us are just trying to make ends meet, and we make sure our children do too. We are all looking for secure, encouraging spaces where we may freely discuss things that are frequently kept private and develop deep connections with like-minded people. Three manuals covering other social media platforms, such as Instagram, Snapchat and TikTok have also been added to the website. Repurposed in partnership with the Social Media Victims Law Center is how the website describes the tutorials. They were put together with help from the center's online social media guidelines, and they provide details on the functions of each site as well as suggestions for how parents can improve their child's safety when their children use them. The pair appeared on American broadcaster CBS News Sunday Morning Program to do their first official broadcast interview together in three years in conjunction with the campaign launch. The couple stated that they want to be a part of Change for Good in the online space during their interview with anchor Jane Polly.
Our children are young, they are three and five years old, Megan remarked, accessorizing her look with a 12,800-pound Cartier necklace and 1,485-pound Ralph Lauren pants. They're fantastic. But as parents, your one concern is keeping children safe. We're glad to be able to contribute to positive change. Even if we recognize that there is still much work to be done in the internet arena given what we can observe. We've got to the point where almost every parent needs to be a first responder, Harry continued. Furthermore, not even the world's greatest first responders could recognize the warning signals of a potential suicide. That like is the most horrifying aspect about this. Megan talked about having thoughts of suicide as well. When the Duchess initially revealed that she had considered suicide while living as a working royal, it was during an Oprah Winfrey interview three years prior. In the interview with CBS News' Sunday morning show, she expressed her hope that her openness may benefit others and inspire people to follow up with their friends. When you've experienced any kind of suffering or trauma, there is a common thread, Megan stated. Being transparent about it is undoubtedly a component of both your and my recovery process. I haven't truly touched the full extent of my knowledge. That is not how I would ever want someone else to feel. That kind of planning is something I would never want done by anybody else. I would never wish for anyone else to be untrusted. She went on. So I'll take that if sharing what I have overcome helps someone or inspires someone to really check in on them and not assume everything is okay just because they look good. Megan went on her second date without her husband in a short period of time, following her dramatic solo appearance at the Children's Hospital Los Angeles Gala. According to a friend who recently spoke to me, the trip was believed to be a part of a new strategy that will see them attending more events apart. The Sussexes will continue to attend events together, but they'll also be seen out in public more frequently by themselves as they follow their respective interests. On a pseudo-royal tour of New York, London and South Africa, Prince Harry was gone from home for a fortnight, while Meghan attended a glamorous children's hospital gala in Los Angeles on Saturday night. According to insiders, this signifies a new turn in the couple's public life. The Duke and Duchess are now comfortable with themselves as a pair as well as as individuals. According to a friend of the Sussexes, the Duchess appears focused on her entrepreneurial track, while the Duke appears focused on his patronage work. It is evident that a twin-track approach is evolving, the insider stated.